Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh huh. So come get some. Cromcon! Cromcon! Hey, we want to shout out to our sponsors, Daytona Beach Comic Con. If you are a fan of comic books, if you're a fan of comic book conventions, and if you like meeting comic book creators and getting comics and comic related stuff, then you need to make your plans to attend Daytona Beach Comic Con. This year's show is September 7th and 8th. Silverline will be there, so you should make your plans to be there too. We'll see you there. If you like comics and find yourself in the Orlando, Florida area, I mean, doesn't everyone come to Orlando at some point in time to see the House of Mouse? But when you're here, you need to make it a point to visit Coliseum of Comics, especially the one on East Colonial Drive. They carry Silverline Comics, even a limited edition Coliseum of Comics version of our comics. So, when you go, be sure to ask for Silverline Comics and tell them we sent you. OCD stands for Orlando Collector Deviants. OCD, Stephen Trish. They're a family of geeks who promote geek things, particularly those around the Orlando, Florida area. They're big supporters of Silverline, and we think you should be supporters of theirs, too. Go give them some love. If you are an independent comic book maker and you need to get your independent comics made, you need to look no further than Kablam! Kablam Digital Printing. They print our books, and they do a bang-up job. They're not only trusted by Silverline, but many, many independent comic book makers. Head on over to Kablam.com and see for yourself just how easy it is to have your comic printed by them. And tell them Silverline sent you. Hi, this is Tim TK, host of That Silverline Show on Tuesday. Join us at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Tuesday night as we discuss pop culture and the joys of making comics. Hi, I'm Barb Kelber, co-host of Silverline's Wednesday Wham. Join us each Wednesday night as we discuss comics, literature, movies, and anything else that may catch our attention. I'm Roland Mann, and I host Silverline's Silver Sunday. Join me every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we make mine Silverline. <laughs> Creating beyond calculation, beyond politics, and beyond the big two, welcome Silverliners to the wonderful world of Wednesday Wham. I'm your host, Dean Zachary. We're joined tonight by the Empress of the Inks, Barbara J. Kilberg, the Paragon of Pencils, Rob Davis. Well, wow, hang on, someone's coming in here late here. Uh, the, the Wizards of Wordplay, Rory Boyle, and could it be, could it be, <gasps> hey, yes. Scott Wakefield oh, is Wait. in the house, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just, here just I am. in time. Late to the party, Scott, as usual. Scott, I, I was just, just going to mention that uh, uh, I have heard a new nickname being bandied about for your uh, partner in crime there, uh, Rory Boyle. Some have said that maybe, just maybe, a character from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer might be more appropriate. Uh, perhaps you can give the man a pickaxe. Wow! <laughs> and uh, so, as we approach the uh, the holiday season, we'll uh, we'll enhance that definition and, and maybe Somebody use that a, a bit red more. Hat. The yeah, yeah I think you really yeah. need to work on that, Rory. Uh, lick, lick of the ice pick. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, bi Biffer, Boffer, Bomber. Yeah. <laughs> which which <laughs> one? <laughs> which oh, my one? goodness. <laughs> we, could just, we could just go off on that. Um, as, as you may know, tonight's subject is the various art styles and how they're used within the context of a single title and changed within that I title how that affects the reader. But the way I wanted to set the table for the discussion was to, first of all, describe uh, several of the period styles that are generally accepted as defining. I don't accept the, them. The art, <laughs> the art, <laughs> don't, doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, don't, well. even, don't even acknowledge. <laughs> don't even acknowledge not. it even exists. Uh, you post-millennialists. Uh, <laughs> what is before art? Before the 21st century. What is, it, is it really, do, do we really see it? Is it really there? Is it really I, there? I, I no, it's it not really. But uh, as, does anybody as was, really know what time it is? <laughs> does anybody, anybody really, really care? Really care? <laughs> Who's lying is it anyway? Thank you. Great song. Great song. <laughs> Chicago, by the way. But One uh, of my favorite groups. Yeah, great group. Absolutely great group. Mm -hmm. A lot of jazz, fusion, rock stuff. Saw them <laughs> live. Oh, man. Oh, I bet it was live. awesome, dude. Oh, yeah, that was Terry awesome. Kath was still with them. Oh. Did you have your bell bottoms? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh you I bet. Have my bell bottoms. Yeah. Don't even. Yeah, don't even go there, man. I had yeah. bell bottoms so intense they were a corduroy. 
bell Ooh. bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's Whoa, good. But, but it goes further than that. Uh, uh -oh. Racing a friend down Elm Street as a preteen way back in 1976, the bell bottom locked up into the chain of the bicycle, uh -huh. sending me Ooh. hurtling forward. <laughs> And landing on both elbows. So, yes, it was a fun summer. <laughs> Lots of stinging oh, going man. on right there. Oh, yeah, I graduated, no doubt. I graduated in 77, so my entire high school career was full of huge bell bottoms, yeah. thick, awesome. thick uh, leather brace, uh, watch bands. Belt. Yes, I had, yes. I had a buckskin jacket with fringe. I had oh, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. All awesome stuff. Um, so the art styles segue into that because much like fashion, uh, we have art styles that were so prevalent. They dominated the decades in which they existed. And I was talking, uh, Scott, for, for purposes of discussion tonight, I was talking off camera before the show and saying that, you know, all the, all the wonks and, and experts and, and comic book scholars in their ivory towers would look <laughs> down on our discussion tonight because they would say, you're not, you're not accurately defining each age. And what I'm saying to them is, you know what, for purposes of our discussion, we're going to summarize each age with a decade. And we're going to call the fifties, the golden age, the sixties, the silver age, okay. the seventies, the bronze age, yes. the eighties, the dark age, mm. the nineties, the modern age, and beyond the 90s, you know, the, the I don't know, the age of de de degradation, death, degeneration, and <laughs> spiraling death into spiral. nihilism. And, yes, <laughs> yeah. I know, I'm just saying, just being funny. But uh, honestly, there's no prevalent style post-2000. In my mind, we can debate that later, later in the show if, if you guys want to explore that. But uh, our, our friend and, and the Empress has been kind and gracious enough to volunteer to screen share with us as we do oh. discuss some of these as art styles. Travel. Yes. Come travel on, back to the time. time if you need with... Before we do that, uh, <laughs> yes. I yes. have just learned that we are now streaming also on LinkedIn. I saw that wow. too. Check that We've out. Gone, like it's right in the banner. Wide. Like you go That's to LinkedIn, weird. click on Silver on Comics, oh. and the, the banner is the video. I mean, you can click on it and it'll, it'll embiggen wow. it. So but, I want to uh, welcome everybody from LinkedIn to yeah, our that's, stream. Yeah, that's the perfect. Right. Well, I mean, we're, we got we got to be professional, folks. This is no, no, yeah, yeah, we we're on LinkedIn. Clean up our act, guys. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. put a tie yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't go off on the rails. Tonight, <laughs> we need our kids. we need our resumes in our little names right there. <laughs> 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 right. You start wearing a shirt that's got the bow tie. On it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Classy you can enough. tab down. Open I, I'm, I'm wearing our my office glasses. That's oh, so, good, oh, Rob. Look you look you. very oh, professional. Very oh, proper. Right. Very, very and proper. I'm, I'm over at the computer. I'll switch back over to the drawing board here in just a minute. Oh, okay. Okay. Print, um, doing a little print Barb out. has been uh, kind enough to, to flash up one of our first defining art styles. Uh, I would say this represents the golden age. One of the most mm -hmm. famous comic books. Barb, is this of all from time. your? This is on your desk right now. You took a yeah. picture from your desk. Okay. Mm. Isn't that but, cool? How you got Action works? Comics number one. It, yeah. <laughs> yes. Three right. Two, right. Yeah. I, I took a photo of this out of my <laughs> you, own collection. You just keep it. Just keep it on the shelf. Just toss it on the, the shelf when you're you done. Have to and, take it out of the plastic <laughs> to get a good picture of it. Yes. Roll it up. Put it in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> for authenticity. This, this of course, influenced heavily by the 30s and 40s for our purposes, uh, uh, defining all the way up into the 50s, the look, the classic Americana mm -hmm. uh, look, this would have been, you know, pre-war and including war and post-war and Korean War. <clears throat> so a lot of the conventions of that period, as far as not only uh, car styles, but the look and feel of no real extreme POVs with camera work, mm -hmm. uh, reflecting the sort of more... Uh, I would say pedestrian viewpoint of just tell the story, right? We're not looking at crazy angles necessarily or close-ups or we're, we're looking at mostly medium shots and establishing shots to tell the story. And uh, Scott, do you have any observations on the golden age as we, as we scroll through some of this stuff? Oh, I, uh, simplicity, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not overly detailed, uh, right. But it's it's good actually. I mean, we look at Action Comics number one here that we're looking at. It, that automobile looks awesome. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's done yeah. with a minim- minimal amount of lines in it. I Forgive me if my my wording is off, but I mean, the, the car with its lines, uh, I know the mm-hmm. car is, but the, the way it's drawn here is that, that 30s, 40s Art Deco style mm-hmm. of simple and... Mm-hmm. Um, and it fits with the same theme of advertising from that era, yes. Uh, of yes. of architectural lines as well. Um, simple, and I I really like it. I love this style. Yeah, it's it's a direct style. The economy of line is mm-hmm. used. Um, the economy of effect in regard to coloring uh, because of the limitations of print and production at the time and so forth. Barb, what about you? What do you when you see golden age work? What comes to mind besides what we've said with the economy of line and color? It's clean. Mm, mm-hmm. Good word. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Clean, uh, very simplistic. Everything is there, however, to give you the story that that they're trying to tell without mm-hmm. cluttering it up with a bunch of extraneous material. That's a good point. Good point. Yep. Rob, what, what about you, my friend? Any, any additional uh, commentary on this piece? It's... It's mostly based on uh, comic books. Of, if anybody knows the the history of comic books, they'll know that that they started out reprinting cartoon strips from yes. the newspaper. They collected them, and then when they ran out, then they started hiring people to do new ones. So the first ones were based were based on that same look. So you had a lot of that medium shot. It was it, everything like that. Then you have people like Jack Kirby come along and go, well, we can do more with that page. So they made they made round panels and they used whole pages. And, you know, people uh, jumped out of the panels when he started doing that. So, but what strikes me about the Golden Age is how crude it is. It's, ah. it's it, it, that simpleness and all that. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a crudeness to it. Uh, a, 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 reason, a part of the reason for that is most of the people who worked Early in the in the industry, weren't they weren't taught in art school? They were self-taught, or uh, you know, they they were people who couldn't find jobs in other art, uh, art regions of art. The art world didn't have quite enough uh, experience, so they they worked in comic books. So it was rather crude and and simplistic. But having to crank those pages out every day like they had to do. You got yeah. better at it as you as you went along. Plus, you learned what you could do and what would work and what wouldn't work. So it, it's kind of crude to start with, but as that time goes by, it gets more and more. Uh, it gets better and better as they go along. So, but I, I, point. the really early stuff is kind of crude, to be honest. It's very crude. Sure, sure. Um, what about you, Rory? Thoughts, observations? Yeah, simple. I think is the word for it. Simplistic. It's it's. Mm-hmm. It's not quite minimalism and not quite realism. I mean, everything was very proportioned, fine-lined. Uh, the car, to Superman, to the guy behind him. It was, well, it was not outlandish at all. Sorry about very... that. I had a no point. worries. A little you blip a... in the electricity <laughs> here. You oh, had no a hiccup. Worries. Oh boy! Oh boy! That's not good. Since you're doing the, the <laughs> putting the stuff up for us. No worries. We uh, we elaborated on our opinions. I think the other the other element I noticed or quality, I should say, that I noticed with this particular style is the focus is usually central um, and it's it's a simple clarification of subject. So here we are. We're focused primarily on Superman doing a feat of unbelievable strength and then someone in the foreground running and flailing his arms as if the yeah. day of the, yeah. the body snatchers has arrived or something. Yeah. It's pretty fun. But uh, typical of the day, but good. It's this all, Like I say, all this is going to come in handy later in the show when we talk about current styles and changing those styles within a title. Um, what's next here? Okay, again, another prime example of the Golden Age. Does it I'm gonna I'm gonna take this moment because we are looking at Superman. Uh, Mark the, arguably, was in the Golden Age. Golden Age. Well, this style was in. <laughs> okay. That's Golden that's, Age, Wayne, right? that's Wayne Boring, isn't it? Isn't that one of his drawings? Of the Superman. It's hard for me to see. I think I it's Wayne to, Boring. I, I wanted to bring up the fact that 
did it ever bother anybody before it was brought up in the late 90s that they were wearing strongman underwear? Did that? <laughs> yeah, I never, did anyone... got, I never got that. That was. Yeah, um... I was. Uh... Hey, you got to be I, mobile. You got to. You know, yeah, right. Nothing holding um, you back. It, it, for those who, who aren't aware of it, um, in the early 20th century, uh, in, in the uh, World's Fair, uh, and often in uh, fairs and circuses that would travel around, there was the definitive stereotypical strongman who usually sported a a handlebar mustache and a wife beater shirt and those types of underwear. And he would perform... Tiger print leotard. Yeah, feats of strength, <laughs> yeah. so to speak. And uh, this particular convention of the day uh, heavily influenced... The artists who came up with Superman and Batman and a lot of the classic uh, DC superheroes wasn't as prevalent in Marvel, although it is there. You can see it in the FF, uh, the Fantastic Four. You can see it in the mm-hmm. Submariner. Uh, and, but as as we move Four forward stars, into too. the. Yeah. 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 So Sorry. I just want to notice that. Down okay. there. That's a big jump. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes. Is this Kirby? It's definitely Kirby-esque if it's not here. It is Kirby, yes. Kirby. It's Kirby, That's new yes. Gods. We're, That's New Gods. We're, yep. That's New Gods. We're now in full on into the Silver Age, uh, the 60s, where all of a sudden we're starting to see more uh, celestial, uh, esoteric, cosmic powers being displayed in, in, in more action uh, that, that's that's beyond just an establishing shot that looks like we're watching a stage show. We're being brought into the action. And, and, you know, everyone who knows Jack Kirby's art knows he's famous for this, bringing you the most dynamic scenes, the most, um, I, I would guess, bombastic is the word <laughs> that comes to mind. Yep. I'll, I'll mm. pass it on to Scott uh, next. What do you think, man? What comes to mind when you see Kirby's epic Silver Age material? Oh, well, there's always, there's it's energy and, and the, they're always engaging. Uh, there's there's never like a static portion of the of the scene, and especially with this. I mean, you've got you've got a fist about to fly, uh, the two two arms fighting there or something. Another fist maybe ready to go, and you have all the uh, the the blasts of light and or the blasts of action. That not just this panel, but like in that that era was always those beams of things happening, go, going, exploding, <laughs> moving, thinking. Uh, exclaiming, mm-hmm. being surprised. Uh, so there's always a lot of movement. But then, then the detail too. And this is, I got a question. Um, yeah. I don't know what you call it. I, mean, I don't know if there yes. is a style, but when you're trying to make something metallic and yeah. you do, so he has a curved metal head there or metal yes. helmet and you yes. do those those lines, that doesn't doesn't seem as prevalent. Correct me if I'm wrong. It doesn't seem like old comics a lot of times because they were just sticking mm-hmm. the primary colors. They didn't mm-hmm. do that a lot. I noticed the fenders on that car just had two white mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. highlights. Yeah, yeah. To, to make it look yeah. curved, so there's a reflection. Yeah. But um, this style of 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 making something look metallic, um, I don't know when that came about or became more prevalent. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely it's there. Weird. Kirby um, really, I would say, ident- is identified with a lot of what we in the art world call core shadows and highlights um core shadows and and making something look shiny um is is a convention that that we learn early on when we're dealing you know drawing armor a lot of armored yeah. characters and vehicles and so on and glass or windows <clears throat> and kirby was a master at, at texture um he was also a master master at bringing to us the language of energy in comics whether it's a mm-hmm. starburst style blast like you see in the kirby lower right but the kirby crackle that you see in the upper <laughs> left the upper left yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so you see all of that here that the crackle uh, i've even used it in in a most recent cover for um the divinity cover i did for uh barb recently but uh everyone uses it now and then as as an homage as a tribute and just because it's cool and it's I fun. A, I have a special brush that just does. Yeah, there's a brush, brush with a Kirby crackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got I've got a brush like that for Photoshop too. It's really I haven't used it much yet, but there's it's like four it different versions. Cool. Yeah, I've got four different oh, yeah. brushes. It does different versions of the Kirby crackle. Very good, oh, Barb. What about you? When you see this, are, are there just a, a handful of words that that summarize 
Kirby style and or the Silver Age style? Uh, it's it's exaggerated. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, Kirby stuff has always been very exaggerated to me. Uh, over, overly. I mean, he's he's taken it to a almost to a, short, almost man. to a, yeah almost to a caricaturistic yeah. style, but it's yes. so it's so dynamic that yes. he can get away with it. Yes, the caricature of power, as I like to call it, mm-hmm. um, rather than the caricature of humor or exaggeration, as we see in a lot of caricature. This is pure power, and the idea of uh, I think most people when they think of Kirby, at least with me. I think of him drawing the thing with those square Mm -hmm. fingers Mm -hmm. and he takes that aesthetic and he can use it with any character from Thor or whoever, any of the Avengers. And it just works because of the consistency of the world that he's created, Mm -hmm. the the filter that you're viewing his work. Uh, I'm going to, I missed, I jumped over one from the golden age. So I'm going to go back to it now. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Go there. No, no, go there. Okay. Good call. Um, one of the groups of the Golden Age, the Justice Society, which eventually gave way to the Justice League as we got into the Silver Age. But uh, you can see by staring at some of these costumes, um, <laughs> a lot of the strongman underwear is there. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of capes, a lot of theatrical look, costumes that would be very comfortable in a Broadway show or a stage production for local, yeah. yeah, local theater. Um, a lot of things that seem almost quaint to us now and would certainly not work in a, in a modern day environment unless you were doing a tribute or, or a specific period story. Um, no, it's, it's awesome. Uh, Rory, any comments on this particular page? Mm. Nothing that grabs me. Is it? Uh, maybe I'm seeing less detail because it's supposed to be a larger, yeah, a larger group. image. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so more it's, it's, simpler. it's more simpler. Yeah, it, it's more the look. I just keep thinking, you know, stage theater, mm-hmm. stage production, rather than realism. There's a uh, <clears throat> there's a sense that the audience will accept comic books uh, as broad brush theater almost like uh if you guys have ever watched the cecil b demille version of the ten commandments Mm -hmm. and then Uh. versus versus modern approaches to Mm -hmm. biblical storytelling and the the gap there um of style uh the ten commandments is almost performed as a stage production you know beautifully done in its style epic uh, it doesn't diminish the the impact of it by any means, but certainly it's noticeable in style. And I get that same feeling from Golden Age uh, comic comic art. Again, um, it's it's minimalist. Even though there's a lot of characters on this page, because right. of mm-hmm. the minimalism of mm-hmm. the style, you they're not all lost in each other. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And even comparing agreed. these. Golden Age, one, Golden Age ones with the Kirby one. The Kirby one had just a lot more musculature mm-hmm. that packed into it. And yeah, these guys are all ripped because they're superheroes. <laughs> but I only see abs on a couple of them. You know? Yeah. Well, the yeah. other ones we're going to be looking at, everyone's got a six or eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're shredded in the yeah. new ones, right? Now we're so, in Silver Age. Back to Silver Age. Now we're back to Silver Age with the group. This is the Justice League. So again, we're, we're starting to get into more sophisticated costume design a little a little more modern palette uh, that reflects the the time period um scott what do you see when you when you look at this and we we enter the silver age what well, the, strikes you here the detail is coming out a bit more there um more of the physique like rory was talking about um you do get um a bit more well i don't know the expressions in the faces again that that action comics number one the guy in the foreground he was pretty expressive um <laughs> but uh i not so with the the kirby style um the action or the comic book hero's physique is i think a bit more bulky and mm-hmm. a bit musclier but i don't know look at superman there he's he is he's an alien which, which super <laughs> Justice League Superman. There, also, for, 
they're not quite so cartoony. They're they're right. starting to, yeah. to tend towards more realism. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can see it. Yeah. You definitely still can simple, see the simple colors though. Still, still, colors are, still more, right. yeah. more simple and flat yeah. in terms of color and rendering. But um, as as has been said, we're starting to see they're looking like more unique individual people yep. wearing real clothing rather than it's still theatrical, but not quite as Broadway show theatrical. Mm -hmm. You know, we're starting to get a little more grounded. Not not yet. Not not where it's going to go, but. Uh, you're starting to see it. Uh, Barb, any, any other observations with this? Um, again, they are hampered by the technology of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but even so, the, the coloring technique has gotten a little bit more sophisticated. Were, were they actually painting uh, at this time? No, uh, I believe so. No, this, no. Was, this was four color, right? Screen print? Four color? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it depends on now. Golden All of these were hand different. colored. Yeah, golden were, was yeah, hand. They're... So we're in silver. So we're starting to get into the screen printing era. Yeah, here. And it's all the um, same shades of everything, like all the green. Right, and, like, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's for... maybe some gr gr gradations, just a little bit, but not yeah. very much. Right, not very much. Right. right. Okay. Right. We can move on. Here we go. Uh, one of the more classic covers of the Silver Age. Again, uh, we're starting to get into more. Uh, this is going to sound weird, but you'll get it when I wrap it up here. That looks more like a villain. Um, mm. We finally entered the age where the costume that I think is one of the coolest costumes ever designed by Steve Ditko. Actually, if you, if you take everything you know about Spider-Man and you just look at that as a person who never read comic books, you might think, that's a villain on the cover because mm -hmm. the, there's a there's a darker color scheme. Those mm -hmm. eyes, those unforgettable uh, almond shaped eyes on his mask. The fact that he's called Spider Man. The webbing. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, this is getting a little bit more intense. So the word here for me is one of the coolest costumes ever designed, and intensity. Scott, go man, go for it. No, it, it it tells everything that there is about him. But you're right. If if you're being introduced, the eyes make mm -hmm. you think something. He what's he hiding? Is, right? Yeah. Is he because he is he angry? Is he uh, is there something nefarious uh, compared to what we were just looking at with the bright colors? Mm -hmm. um, the the superhero the hero pose and like what what's going on here um but his outfit does fit the character and shows like okay he's spider man something mm -hmm. uh something about spiders he's swinging i don't is that yeah that's he's just like a, a rope there it's not obvious it's a web or anything like that mm -hmm. but we have word uh, balloons yep yep but mm -hmm. he's i actually don't know what he's saying there um uh, I have to bring my face in really close. Though the it. world may mock Peter Parker, the timid teenager, that's, that's good. He will that's soon good. marvel at the awesome of the might of Spider. But Spider Man, he could, yeah. Again, he could be saying he could be kind of grumpy there if he's mocking yeah. Peter Parker. I'll show mm -hmm. them. Uh, yeah, I'll geez. show them. Yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, Barb, what about you? When you when you look at this and try to try to remove all the preconceived knowledge and knowledge that you actually have about this character. When you first see this in comparison to the previous material, what comes to mind? Uh, well, for one thing, we, we have the word balloons that, uh, yes. that's that been introduced. So that's, this is going to be um, a fashion for a while in the mm -hmm. Silver Age. Um, and we have a little blurb at the bottom also in this issue. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. we've got, mm -hmm. we've got um, some background going on now as well. Uh, not mm -hmm. just uh, simple perspective. Figures. Yep. Yes. We've got a little bit you know, perspective, a little more detail. Uh, we've got some grays thrown in there. Um, and as you mentioned, as somebody else mentioned, this is introducing Spider-Man. And we can't tell, like you said, we can't tell from either reading this, uh, the blurbs on the front, or from looking at this character, whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. So he could be an anti-hero. He could be a hero. Yeah. We don't mm -hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Rob, what about you? When you see this classic cover, 
What strikes you the most? Um, okay, you want me to, you want me to look at it without context or with the context? Both, both. Because, because I the context is this is a Kirby cover, really, on on a Steve Ditko book. Now it's inked mm-hmm. by Ditko, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Ditko would never draw Spider Man swinging like that. His, right. His, it would it would be a whole. That's a, that's definitely a Kirby. Uh, so mm-hmm. the first time I saw this was well after I'd started reading Spider-Man. I hadn't seen Amazing fin- Fantasy number 15. And I saw that cover and I go, That's, th- that doesn't feel right. That doesn't mm-hmm. feel like Spider-Man. But mm-hmm. it's a very effective cover in introducing the character. But, but it doesn't have the same feel of the stuff that's inside the book and, and what happens to him later. The things that... Uh, the, that Ditko does with the with the anatomy of, of Spider Man and and how he he jumps around and does all of his stuff is very acrobatic and this doesn't show any of that. There's no grace. There's grace in Ditko's work on Spider Man. There's no grace in this. He's just swinging. There's no gotcha. you know. There's you know his legs are are, are are posed just so. There's like I said. There's some grace to the way Ditko did him. So mm-hmm. that. Th- that's that's what I get from this cover. Now, I I get I didn't see it fresh on the stand when it first mm-hmm. came out, but all mm-hmm. the other points about that are very accurate. Uh, you can't tell whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. Uh, the the fact that his costume's real dark, mostly. yeah, because it's, it's <laughs> a light scene. black, and, yeah. and then you've got the spider webs on him. You know, people people are it, it, spiders are icky. Yes. You know, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, a Spider Man. Ooh, what? Ooh, well, that's yeah. got to be a bad guy. It's got to yeah. be a bad. Turns out to be a good guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Good call. Good call. Good observations all around. Rory, what about you? Oh uh, yeah, I just always marvel at that when using blue and black together because you you yeah. really have to pay attention because the low lights and highlights would have to switch daytime to nighttime, right. and heaven forbid it's an evening or morning shot. But I think. Uh, Spidey is just barely hanging on to that guy. If we were to follow, like where his hand would actually yeah, he's end, just, he's just yeah, grabbing he's him right, by barely. the belt or something. He's just holding him onto the hip. Drop this guy. Gonna drop that guy. <laughs> Got him a hold by his hip bone, basically. Yeah. And it yeah. looks like he's running, like Spidey is running because all those people yeah, in the background are watching. Right, right. But again, we're we're entering this realm of we're getting a little bit darker, mm-hmm. a little bit more ambiguous with good guy, bad guy nature. Because uh, we're not sure, mm-hmm. uh, and certainly none of the teen angst that is to come in between the covers here. You know, we don't really know what this is about from looking at this. Is this this could be a villain uh, throwing a guy down? You know, uh, we don't know. Yeah, are you ready? Um, I'm ready. Go for it. Ah, the Flash. Oh. <laughs> this is a bright <laughs> cover. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. It's an um, odd cover because it doesn't show him his power. He's isn't that interesting? Stationary. Yeah, yeah stationary. Kind of um, stiff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, the look is getting a little bit. <laughs> it's this is still bright. I would argue this might be more of a throwback um, to the golden age look a little bit more. Yeah. But I think it's the action here that brings brings us more into silver age um, and again we have the word balloons and the little yes uh, the, the little uh, uh blurb mm-hmm. unbelievable shock <laughs> follow shock <laughs> yeah. yeah dc is uh definitely doing what marvel does they're copying each other back and forth you know i've had enough of you two from now on <laughs> yeah. The Flash works alone. Ooh. Unbelievable. Hey, them's, them's running words. Uh, Scott, awesome. what do you think, man? What, what what are you feeling off this one? Well, I, I think it looks a little Archie Comics-y. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. A, a little yeah. slapsticky. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But that might, you know... What, it, makes it feel, what makes it feel that way, though? Well, I actually, the colors, again, yeah. they're, they're very... Yeah, that's very you know, Archie. All, a monotone that's not the right word but one color one color one color one color um there's no depth to their colors yeah, like no just d- on that super or that spider-man <clears throat> where he said the, the black with the blue 
gives mm-hmm. a reflection and a there's light. No there's no shading at all. With the yeah, there's no, yeah. and everything's two dimensional. They're all on the same plane. Yeah, that foreground um, background is not. And he well. looks like he looks like he's not really standing on that building. It looks like someone else drew the background, and it was he was. Pasted on, pasted in there. Yeah, it's just, it's just posed, yeah. It's yeah, it's just an odd cover, um, and maybe it's trying to be goofy. And you know, I know every, <laughs> every you know, we all there's Star Trek four. We got Star Trek four to to, to, to provide sure. leather. So sure. every comic has their goofy. Every once is that the one with the whale. That is the one with the whale. You know, yeah. The one with the whales. The one That's with the, the whales. Whale. Yes. All I can remember. That's a great one. It's one of my favorites. But you know, um, some, some that, would, it would be two, three, and four as the most epic. Star Trek trilogy out there, so you know, because got to show full respect for two, three, I, and four. I love them. I, saying, well, wait, uh, wait, two, three, and four would be Khan, yeah. mm-hmm. search for Spock, search for Spock is yeah, not so much. Is that not no, it's the same yeah, not favorite. really feeling search, it? Not my favorite. Search for Spock is is uh, it, it it leads into what happens later, but it's not. Yeah, no, yeah. The odd, okay. it, the even numbered ones are the better ones. They are. I see. They are. Five is five is one enough. of the worst. Uh, five is a travesty. Six is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, if anybody out there uh, as a, as a Trek or uh, Trek fan, um, the Fathom Events and Regal Cinema is doing Wrath of Khan 40th anniversary director's cut. Yeah. yeah. There's next week. I'm going on Monday to see it. So That's anyone wants to rock. come to Rochester, New York, and join me, I'll be. I'll be seeing it. So. <laughs> I, think, I think they're doing it locally here too. But they, they're sure doing it locally I'd have here to look too. it up. Yeah, I yeah, saw yeah, the yeah. motion picture when they did that the twenty fortieth rather fortieth anniversary. 40th, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that took my took my teenage son, and he he managed to stay awake through the motion picture, which is good. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> wow! <laughs> so, son, we're going to the talkies. <laughs> going um, to the talkies. So, so it, I, anyways, that cover seemed kind of like to me seemed yeah. a little slapsticky, a little odd, mm-hmm. but. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one here, the X Men, um, I chose this one just because it sort of defines what Kirby and Lee were doing, uh, Stanley and Jack Kirby were doing in the early 60s, bringing forward the X Men, which would change a lot of how people perceived comics, uh, from that point on. That makes sense. Wow, yeah, um, just the way the characters are drawn again, that's, we're, that's we're, Steranko. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it is, lovely. Yeah, we're going. We're going beyond uh, theatrical facades mm-hmm. and and high school stage plays. Here, we're we're getting into really intense science fiction and uh, just unexpected look. Uh, you know, you don't expect to see what you're seeing with the X Men, which is part of its appeal. Scott, nice, what do you think? Nice job with the ice, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. I yeah, agree. I. Uh, I, I love the the movement there and their features are exaggerated, um, mm-hmm. but they're all doing something in it. Um, uh, Rob, you said Spider-Man was very boring. He's just swinging. Um, mm-hmm. And this one, they're, they're all in the middle of some sort of extreme action. Um, they're all mm-hmm. at the extremes of their, their movement. Cyclops is really obviously running. Uh, Iceman is, He's, he's sliding, but he's, he's as far over just about as he could get. <laughs> he's yeah, icing. he's ice manning. Um, <laughs> Angel there does look like he's kind of smacking into a clear, clear window, like he's a bird. Yeah. <laughs> right, boom. Yeah. The hazards That's of the job. Nice. <laughs> it's kind a Windex commercial. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit. Um, but uh, but it, they're all very very active. They're all in in. Yeah. in poses that the so shows a lot of movement we are actually seeing some shading some color shading on this mm, you yeah. can uh they've t- made an attempt on her legs um her green some some shining on her green outfit mm, the shading yeah. with the ice is very well done so yes at, and with, we've got look. purple on the blue mm-hmm. uh costume there is this is the first time i've seen of all, of all these where we're actually getting into some tonal, tonal uh, uh, combinations with the colors. Yes, yeah, some contouring with the colors. Mm-hmm. That looks mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. It's, it's strong. Uh, anyone else before we we move on? I think it's Rob? just it's starting to get like ah. over the top, which is that's going to be yeah. the next era. That's yeah, yeah that's everyone. True. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. They're all in motion. There's there's yes. so much motion in all those. Good call. Characters. 
motion. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what were those robots what year... called? What's that? Sentinels. Sentinels, Sentinels yeah. Sentinels, Sentinels yeah. What, what year yeah. is this? We're still in the, the uh, uh, Silver Age. This okay. is 60s. Yeah. So 60s, yeah. roughly we're in the decade of the 60s at this point. So we can move on, Barb, to the next stage. That's just another one I wanted to add in to show motion mm -hmm. uh, and group mm -hmm. scenes were a big part of it, along with what Barb has already commented on with, look how much copy is on this cover. Um, yeah. You know, arguably, maybe they went a little overboard, but that arc of the human torch just really sells it. It's just yeah, it's beautiful. Cool. Yeah. You know. And clever what they did with his body, because like, how would you see somebody if they're covered in flame? Right, like, kind of like the broad yes. stroke musculature. But again, motion, action. We're we're entering the the the, the '60s here, and then the uh, the esoteric nature that was permeating pop culture is starting to come through. Um, everything about it, uh, the blurbs, uh, definitely motion. Uh, Barb, any, anything that jumps out at you that you want to comment on? Lots of words on there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find your next one here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, that's okay. We're we're getting into, I'd love for you to find the uh, the, the Spider-Man yes. scene that I, that I shared with you earlier. Doesn't have to be. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Um, again, this is an excellent example. We're getting into Bronze Age. Now, this is, this is the 70s. Mm -hmm. Um, the seventies marked by not only more extreme action on the covers, but mm -hmm. we're getting into the more shredded anatomy. Um, Spidey goes from having a more black in his, uh, non red part of his costume to more blue, yeah. uh, brighter, uh, the, the, the foes of these superheroes are starting to get more monstrous and mm -hmm. somewhat mm -hmm. horror oriented. I think you have your. Is this the scorpion? Yes, yeah, scorpion. scorpion. So, um, lots again, more a bit of, a lot of lots color. more going on. The horror uh, input is there. Um, the action is there. Scott, what do you see as somebody who probably wasn't reading comics in that era? When you look no. at this, what do you no. what do you see when you, when you well, look at this? I do think that this style, like you were saying, with this physique, the lots of muscles. I feel like this held on for a long time because I'm thinking I don't yes. want to give it away to the 90s, but I, that's when I started reading. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like that's how every X Man looked. Mm -hmm. um, everybody had they're all very detailed. Um, yes. And then yeah, getting uh, am I wrong? I feel like the words, the amount of copy on the cover starts to diminish here at mm -hmm. this phase. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, the, good amount of action, but then now with more hues and tones and gradations um and a lot more the the, the detail um the fine detail as well uh, even just in all the water all the all the detail there the splash the, the, so the, the black lines in there yeah. to give it motion yeah. you can see kirby's influence here uh because the foundations that kirby had set down in the silver age you can see everyone's following his lead here with bringing you into the action again you're not watching a stage performance from mm -hmm. the audience you're in there with the characters experiencing it and that is definitely a silver age but even more so a bronze age quality barb what what do you see when you look at this again what uh what scott said we see a real uh upswing in uh grade color gradations um and showing shading with colors and it's it's a lot busier yeah oh yeah i've always thought with so with uh superhero physiques like if you saw peter parker in high school <laughs> in gym class or if to like some of the tony stark we see or bruce wayne walked into the sure. boardroom as sure. jack this <laughs> yes yes that's jack what's right, up with right. that guy that's He's a mild mannered <laughs> boy it's like almost seven feet tall and it, it's <laughs> He's got pecs like my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. just Bruce Wayne. It's <laughs> good, good, good observation just, there, just Bruce. Uh, Rob, what about you? Any anything from the the Bronze Age here that that really starts to to jump out at you? Yeah, this is this is a Gil Kane cover. Uh huh. One of my uh, favorite and, artists. Yeah, and I can see touches of several different inkers on it. 
uh, there's a little John Romita in there. There's some bunches of different stuff. But uh, Gil Kane's anatomy uh, it was very good for Spider-Man. He, mm-hmm. he picked up some of that that uh, that odd sp- spider-ish uh, anatomy moves that uh, Ditko did. So mm-hmm. you get some of that here. But uh, there's that there's kind of an S shape to the to the layout of that cover, <clears throat> starting yeah. with the scorpion, mm-hmm. and then you mm-hmm. circle down and come back through Spider Man. Yeah, so it, it, yeah, that's so you but get that motion coming, coming through. Yeah, oh, yeah, and the water the water helps that even more. It's uh, it gets that all that motion in there. So yeah, it's it's a very well conceived cover, but it's there's a lot going on. And uh, again, it's still mostly flat colors, but there is some gradation. And uh, again, we go with with red in the background, a warm yeah. color in the back, in the, the back, warm right? colors in the back, mm-hmm. and the blue and the green. But the, it brings them forward. Some it, it's it's it, that's not how it's supposed to work, but it does here. It does very here. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. I also want to bring out the graphic design element of the iconic pose of standing spider-man mm. in the upper left right. corner mm. this this was a just a hallmark of 70s comics uh uh-huh. you, you always had i always found it cool to have this iconic silhouette almost uh, of the character in the top left corner well, of every cover you know? that was a there was a practical story. reason yeah yeah there's yeah, a definitely. sales reason for that because when they uh, the place where I bought my comic books was a, uh, a a grocery store, and they had they didn't have a spinner rack. They had like magazine racks, like you see today, and the yeah. the books were stacked, so you could you could pull it oh. you could pull it aside, and you would see okay, that's a Marvel comic. I see the I see the little the character and the Marvel logo, and DC they had the little circle there, and you go okay, yeah. well that's a yeah. DC book. So right. it, that was right. a, it was a sales ploy. I always look for those Marvel because I, I was a Marvel zombie back then when, <laughs> those, when these, these things hit the hit the stage. So yeah, that was great stuff. Yeah, it really, it really was great. Barb, what's what's next? What do we got? Ooh, one of oh, my faves of all. Jim Apparel. Looks like Jim Apparel. Is that Jim or is that Neil? It could no, be Jim. We have Tommy. I think we have Tommy. We have How do you do, everybody? We have Tommy hey, sign, Tom. Tommy, oh, no. uh, reporting Tommy in live from the Blair Witch Project. That's right, the anchor who never. Are you ghost hunting? I am ghost hunting. Oh, I think we should go. Do- oh man, I almost ran off the road. No, uh, the uh, no bike this uh, just a uh, late after work uh, bike ride through the woods, and I wanted to drop in and say hello. I'll it's see nice. a lot of you guys in a couple of, in next week. Yeah. I'm, yeah. So, I'm so yeah, happy. Man. It's gonna be fun, fun, fun. Tommy, it's how did your rock. bike enjoy coming to work? <laughs> Bring your bike to work day. I think my bike <laughs> was very happy. It got okay. the lean up against the printer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Please don't leave me in the garage on the day of work. And so I, so it was. I was he, it, it, it's it's a girl bike. I call her I call her Inky because she's black. Oh. You see, you know, like Ink. Like oh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. That's sweet. A man and his bike. What can yeah. you say? <laughs> a bike and his uh, man. A man and his bike. <laughs> Tommy, we uh, we were just talking about uh, all these different art styles, and you being being very versatile, like our friend Rob here. You guys can do any style. You can ink any style. Rob can draw any style. Uh, so we're going through all the you know Silver Age and Golden Age and Bronze Age and all that. <clears throat> and having a good time sort of sort of talking about uh, art styles what's your favorite age as they define it uh in the comic world uh did you did you like the bronze age like the, the 80s the 90s what was what was your favorite decade you know what, what, whatever you want to consider old school spider-man <laughs> okay that's the yeah the just that nice clean line work i mean i you know like you were saying you know I, I, I like doing all the scritchy, scratchy stuff and all of the, the, the hash, you know, the feathering and all that kind of stuff. But I still just like regular old thick to thin, you know, solid, just solid line work is what I like. And yeah. You can, you yeah. can tell yeah. when I, 
I like that. I like big old, big old thick lines. Big old thick lines. Big old yeah. thick lines. We were, we were talking about uh, John Romita and Gil Kane. You know that that era of Spidey, uh, probably Bronze Age is what you're referring to as old school Spidey with the okay. death of Gwen Stacy and all that. So yeah, yes. we're we're getting yep. we're getting to that scene right now. But we just moved up to to Batman here, and this is definitely Bronze Age, the '70s look. You're, you guys, Scott, you notice how mm-hmm. you're immersed in this, how this comes right yeah. out at you. Mm-hmm. So we're, yeah. we have gone from the stage look to you are right in it. Batman is right in your face. He's leaping at you. You've got the ripped physique. You've got just, you know, a lot of copy on the, on the page. Um, what do you and think, it's, Scott? How do you, it's how do right you in your face. It's right in your yeah, face. Yeah, man. It's a yeah. boom. You know, yeah, it's it's awesome movement, and clearly with the cape stuffs going on, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's clearly uh, dark. I love the there's a moon there. That's it's a bit of a theme with with his his logo, and uh, but it it's it's a lot of action, and he's he's moving. I love it. I love that. I love the style. It's almost hinting toward the decades to come, the dark eighties. Yeah, you know, which is right around the corner here. We're gonna get to it, but. The 70s, it, it, you know, thanks to Neil Adams and Jim Aparo and others, uh, Batman became that dark Avenger that, that then began to permeate the films as they came later. But, Barb, what do you see when you see this? What, what jumps what out? What I at? see is that hand is almost breaking the fourth wall. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm. Very that cool. is right awesome. Like it. yep. Kind of and grab you. It's bringing, pulling you into the picture. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! It's awesome. You've got the you've got the warm red background and the cool blue foreground. Yeah, so it pops a hot summer night. It does pop. Rob, what about you, my friend? Is this is this your is this your jam? Are you digging it? Yeah, yeah. I, I liked I liked the stuff that was being uh, done around this. That looks like Jim Aparo and Walt Simonson kind of rolled together. I'm not sure yeah. who did that cover. Uh, but it's but it's coming at you. That's that's Kirby's influence there, because that that's what always got me about Kirby's work, especially in the early '60s. Is everything's coming out of the panel. That fist is come that foreshortened and coming. That hands coming out to grab you, bring you in, as as I said earlier. Uh, but but yeah, there's the action. But yeah, this, but it's a very it's very simple at the upper part, and then you get. To get the hint of the city underneath, so yeah, just yeah, that's just that's a great cover. I love yeah, that really cover. T- yeah, it's, it, it, it jumped it out sings. at me. It yeah, sings. Yeah, as I was reaching, yeah. researching for the show, I was like, okay, I, I got to throw this one in. Got to have um, that one in there. Yeah. Got to that. Rory, what about you? As we as we march through the seventies, what what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, so I've been, I've been watching the background, specifically the cityscapes, and how they've gotten progressively uh, more interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And especially here, it, it's a very it, the cityscape itself is dynamic, and the attention to detail on these buildings, with their with their highlights, lowlights, and things like the smokestacks on the top, on the left, in the back, or uh, just the chimneys on these things, in the windows, and how they're like it, it's much more precise, more realistic. Yeah. Uh, Roland is Roland is being a wonk here. And oh, us. wonky uh, Roland! Wonky Roland. 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 <laughs> wah, wah. So here he goes. Golden Age, 1938 to 1951. Silver Age, 56 to 7. I told you we were going to get this. Bronze Age, yeah. 1970 to uh, 1985. Of all people, um, he did it. Yeah. Actually, I, warned yeah. you guys, I warned you guys <laughs> right? this was coming. And yes, he is actually correct. Yes. The, the 80s are the Don't Iron admit age. it. Don't admit it. Yeah, he <laughs> is. He is. But uh, <laughs> 80s are not dark ages. I use that role in mainly as just a euphemism for the content, but it, yes, technically it is the Iron Age. Now, this this is one of the, the defining moments of the, the Bronze Age because of Gwen Stacy's death, not only the content, but also look at the camera angle. You've got this oblique, you know, mm-hmm. POV from above for drama. Mm-hmm. You've got yeah. the obvious, you know, death scene. Um, this defines the Bronze Age for me. Uh, and, and it also, again, reinforces... How cool! Uh, I believe Gil Kane had the privilege of yes. doing that piece, yes, he did. and uh, yes, he did. to me, that's iconic. That is, that's Spidey and Gwen Stacy. There are there are no others. Scott, what do you what do you see when you 
when you see this, this scene? it's it's um the angle is feels like either we're zooming in on something really pulling important out or coming out and, and and going away like he's he's crying to god uh he's mm -hmm. angry at everything mm -hmm. um and we're and we can't well and from this angle like we can't do anything about it either so we have to just uh mm. watch the agony and the pain uh yeah. of this Good call. so it's a little bit of a distance um and we're removed from it That's and the, the location he's removed from everything yeah. else too very very alone very much yeah, alone yeah. barb barb what about you uh impact from this uh i wish they would have used a different color on the the rooftop space it's really <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah. Flatter. Kind yeah. of a mustard. Yeah, yeah. It looks like maybe mustard blue. yellow. Maybe yeah. mustard, maybe. <laughs> you know, back then, back then they only had five colors, so that was it. They didn't have any. Yellow. Let's see, know, yellow, blue, song. baby poop. Yeah. <laughs> poop, poop color. Yeah, we'll use poop color. That'll work. I, I think yeah, we have too much of that, anyways. I think they could <laughs> have used a, a, a better color on her coat, too, because it should have popped more um, mm -hmm. against the, the puke yellow background. Uh, so it kind of diminishes the, the diminishes it just a bit, but then I mean we've got this huge blurb down at the bottom: <clears throat> "The night when Stacy died." died. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty dramatic. Yeah, very dramatic. Rory, what about you? Uh, I like that they kept the background show, but a moment to really emphasize, you know, the characters. But I don't know if it's the way that building is, the top of the building is drawn, or it's the just a, such a flat color. It doesn't look like he's. Angry? Sitting upright for yeah, it, it yeah. flat against it's it. It's a weird, weird angle. Yeah, well, it, you, you it, notice it doesn't, no doesn't shadow. quite work. No yeah. shadows. No yeah, shadows. Back, for separation. He, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had some just, shadows to anchor it. Right. Obviously, I think I think that was intentional because uh, psychologically, it might give you that isolation that that Scott was talking about. Mm. Just them alone on a stage, yeah, exactly. almost. Yeah. You know. It that's almost, what it, it, that's what it looks like. It. Tommy, is this is this your jam, my friend? Is this your I just, I just jam? like the the you know the Spider Man. <laughs> no, yeah, I love it. I love it. It's uh, I thought I thought I lost the yeah. connection. I am way out in the woods, by the way. So. Right. Yeah, you're 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 cracking out up a little bit, but that's oh oh oh. I'll try exactly. to stay on, but don't. I'm, but don't but I'm don't worried. do it for real, please. Yeah, I'm worried. <laughs> no, about I'm not. no. <laughs> way, Roy, way out. In the woods. Way out in the woods. Way out in the woods. Are you? Uh, are you Florida woods. Lost? The the woods. Are you feeling lost? <laughs> no, like I'm not lost. Either? That's just way out in the woods. <laughs> okay. He's okay. looking for somebody <laughs> to mug. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's uh, this is also. That's, 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 that, that happens to be where the bike trail is. I don't know. I just went <laughs> <look> there. <laughs> The uh, again, this this is definitely Bronze Age. Oh, so okay. we're talking about uh, subject matter being a lot more serious, uh, oh, drug yeah. addiction, and so on. I believe this would be Neil Adams and, and, and uh, Jenny O'Neill and Neil Jenny O'Neill. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, we've got subject matter that's a little bit more socially relevant, um, which hadn't really been delved into as much. We've got realism. Mm -hmm. of rendering and anatomy mm -hmm. um, and no comics code authority uh, no stamp in the no, upper right hand no, corner no stamp in the corner all. at all it's true. um this is, this is interesting welcome brent welcome brent. my friend brent. good to see you Howdy. we're we're having a journey through the various ages of comics from the the golden age to the silver age to the bronze age which is where we currently are roughly the decades of the 50s, 60s, 70s. So we're we're in the 70s now. We're just kind of observing. We're never going to make it to the 2000s. You're only allowed to talk about it, Brent, <laughs> is if you can define them year to year. What? That's it. We've, we've all done it's, them already. We've, yeah, we've, all, we've all done it. But, but okay. uh, what do you see, like, when you see this cover, um, what, what do you see, Brent, since you're, since you're freshly in, um, we, we're talking in terms of, like, you know, the realism of it, the color scheme of it. Uh, what's what's a handful of words that, that stick with you when you see this cover? Uh, well, um, uh, 
I'm always going to be a word guy. Can't help it. Uh-oh. <laughs> I literally yeah. think in words. So yeah. my first thought is junkie. They don't really mm-hmm. use that term anymore. Junkie. <laughs> yeah. um, junkie. Yeah. And um, junkie. Yeah. So uh, art wise, uh, I mean, you got everything there. Uh, it's mm-hmm. interesting uh, if you look at it from a philosophical point of view, which is uh, normally you have all these guys in these really pronounced poses, um, mm-hmm. but everything is almost uh, the opposite of that. You know, they're they're very much just standing around uh, and kind of trying to add gravity to the subject, which mm-hmm. is is interesting. Different kind of um, dramatic. Different kind of dramatic. Good call. Calculus mm-hmm. says coloring was decent at best back then, though. Yes, they were. They definitely had had limitations uh, for the for the coloring. Yeah. Barb, what what does this say to you when you when you see this cover? Well, when you think back to uh, to the first one we saw, where it's just really two dimensional and mm-hmm. flat, we've come a mm-hmm. long way. I mean, look at we've got perspective where we're going back towards the door. And we've got mm-hmm. we've got uh, um, Speedy is right up front, right in your face, and then we get a mm-hmm. middle ground. We, we definitely we have real definite background, mm-hmm. middle ground, foreground, and the mm-hmm. coloring and the shading has gotten so much better. Um, there's definitely. a lot of definition and depth now. Um, we're we're getting into the very artsy phase of comics. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. definitely uh, emotional impact, uh, dimensional impact. Scott, what uh, what do you see when you when you Same, look at this? Barbara was saying it all moves this way: the foreground, middle ground, mm-hmm. background, and even the logo takes it there uh, yep. too. So it's all it's all spaced out nicely. Again, that background too, just like the Spider-Man rooftop, it is kind of a poop. Puke brown. <laughs> got that yeah. same, yeah, that, that same yeah. leftover color that they had from you know, the same, yeah. <laughs> they must have <laughs> had a deal on it. Extra ink. Extra ink. We gotta use this. We gotta in get this, rid of this case, this. because we have three figures on here and we've got a lot of detail going on, they needed to fade the background for that reason. Yeah. So yeah. the yeah. color actually works this way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Calculus kind of... says RIP Neil Adams. Amen, brother. Yeah. Uh, really miss, uh, eyes. miss Neil. Yes, go ahead, Rory. Yeah, Speedy's eyes is just looking right at you. That'd be breaking fourth wall right there. Mm-hmm. It looks at you like he, like he knows he's done something wrong. Definitely, definitely. Uh, what's what's next, Barb? We want to keep rolling here. Secret War. Oh, oh, oh here we go. Fun. We've entered the eighties, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We've entered <laughs> the eighties, which uh, uh, Roland properly says is the Iron Age, the modern age. Um, definitely the Iron Age uh, for me. This is this is the the era of big epic battles and cosmic things and changing costumes and just just yeah. wild wild mm-hmm. events. Uh, Rob, what do you see when you when you see this uh, Secret Wars cover? Uh, uh, that just people, yeah, all these heroes exploding out of the middle of the yeah. cover. Mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. coming at you. It's mm-hmm. very much like that Batman when we were looking at earlier. Uh, yeah. There's no, there's absolutely no background really. I mean, I, I, yeah, I can't see anything there. <laughs> there it, no. it, a, I, what I do see, you mean? There's it's an icy no tundra. There's, there's no. Yeah, there's <laughs> it's no, an icy. There's no, blue, no, blue and white. No room, <laughs> blue and white, room blue for white. anything anyway. With all those characters, I don't know how they got those words jammed in there. Off yeah, the yeah, really. But, I know, but right? I, uh, did, yeah, who did they cover up? But, yeah. Uh, well, I exactly. Know. I think they should have left that out. To be honest, I, yeah, that yeah. cover works well without all the blurb. But yeah. uh, it, it get, you get all the characters in there, and there's a, and it, it's coming at you. That action's yeah. coming right out of the middle. So yeah, yeah and Captain America in the lead. Oh yeah. Again, yeah! again, he looks like he's about to break the fourth ball there. Yes. yes. Yep. Wolverine's Great original colors. I don't know. Look at yep. Spider-Man swinging off the page. Spider-Man yep. swinging off the page. You know, this this is one of those really yeah. the, the is blasting somebody. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It is awesome. What's uh, Scott? What do you see? You see this? Uh, I, anything to add? To the color 80s? scheme. 
very similar to the the Justice Society Justice League that era uh-huh. too. Just the bright bright colors again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good call. Good call. Let's let's move on so we can get into the nineties here. Uh, this is late eighties. Hey, I wanted to go back. Get into... go, go back again. Go back. I was gonna. Tom, I was, I was to go back one. Go, yeah, go back again real quick. Well, I'm trying when, to find it now. Um, I don't we know what it looked like. How many? How many? That type of poses have you? There you go. How many? You know, of, is this the beginning of when we started seeing these kind of covers, where it was just all these characters just exploding at you like that? I, it, that to me, it seems like this is one of the first. I don't maybe, but it's probably not. But it seems like it's you know, for me in my mind. When I think about those type of covers, this is the cover that always pops up in the back of my head. It's like when I need to draw something like that, this is the kind of, this is what I see. And then I steal yeah. from it. Yeah, so, I think, so what yeah, do you I think? think you, mean, you mean a mosh pit of characters? Yeah, just <laughs> jumping out. The, yeah, just, you yeah. know, that the beginning, is this like one of the big first ones where they started doing this kind of crazy stuff where it's almost like, are they all clip art characters? They just stuck on there or is, has anybody ever seen this cover? You know, uh, in person. You know, oh, the, yeah. the oh yeah, yeah, oh, the inked version of it. Person. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's uh, it's it's what I call the crowded, crowded <laughs> exploding group cover. Yeah. And you yeah, know, the George George Perez was famous for stuff oh, like that. Yeah. Because yeah. we're all yeah. we, we've all been asked to draw something like that. Can you put oh, yeah. thirty people on a page and have them all <laughs> running at you? And then you know, and they're all doing something different. You're like, okay, yeah. and then I, this is this is what you think of, and you go, I'm going to yeah. do something like this. I'm Which, sorry, go ahead. Uh, next, next. You definitely next. have Captain America in the foreground, just looking so awesome, and Wolverine right up to the side, and then Storm uh-huh. in the back going, "Oh, come on, guys! Yeah, come on, move guys. out of the way! <laughs> move, 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 move out of the They're all pushing each other out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get, I need more screen time. Yeah. 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 Look, they paid me more. I need to get, get move. And this and is. Then uh, we go to. This is a great. Minimalism. The late. The late eighties. Uh, we're we're getting, now. Oh yeah. Very we minimal. get some Frank Miller and mm-hmm. uh, Alan Moore, and uh, we we get to Dave Givens with his with Watchmen, and these pretty much defined late eighties. And as we transition into the nineties, things start to go much darker much grittier we begin to deconstruct superheroes at this point uh which still continues to this day believe it or not they're still not tired of that they're still doing it so um but again uh this this is definitely where art takes a second position to the story um what what are your thoughts on this scott i'm sure at this point you're starting to read comics yeah, at this it, point, right? <laughs> I, I, I'm starting to be cognitive. Uh, about yeah, yeah. You're I was born. born. <laughs> yeah. He was three years old when this. Yeah. <laughs> it it's it is it's this is about as simple as it gets. I mean, clearly we know that Batman's going on there. Something's going on, um, but it matches the style of the era of getting simple. Um, mm-hmm. Watchmen got no clue. Um, mm-hmm. it might be even for me a little bit too post-mo- postmodern. Never like, watched the I don't know if you pick that up in 1980, whatever. It's a big blob, blob yeah. of blood. Mm-hmm. So you're it's oh, blood right on a smiley blood. face. Yeah, I, uh, oh yeah. Are we supposed to know? I, 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 you know that. I'm yeah. sincere in this question. Should I like oh. you know, in 1980, whatever? Would <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, <laughs> would you have any clue? Says, the, I was you know, I know I'm. When this yeah. came out, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I, it, it's fine. Um, it might be, it's enough to make, get you interested. Like, what is what's going on here? What is that's yeah. obviously the smiley face face, and there's and a blood. Drop of so, blood. yeah, yeah. The dark, uh, the darkness begins. Uh, yeah. uh, Barb, did you have anything you wanted to throw? throw Both in of on these this one? are simplistic but powerful in their simplicity mm-hmm. because yep. they're stark. They draw your eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mm-hmm. the bolt of lightning through the black draws your eye straight towards the black. The mm-hmm. splotch of red blood over yellow and black is startling. Um, mm-hmm. Both of them have a bit of shock factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it draws your eyes immediately. It, it's at a point where we're, where content 
is overwhelming the complexity of the art, right? So the content is obviously the 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 star here, not so much the art, but what what the art is describing. Uh, that's what's supposed to catch your attention. I'm going to take this moment to ask you guys just an open question here. If you're reading a story and you're you're seeing, for example, Bronze Age art, and then all of a sudden in the middle of the story, this art takes over. Is it something that's going to bother you, alienate you, or does it depend on the content? Scott? Um, if, if the art changes suddenly without mm-hmm. a major plot point or a break in the plot, I don't mm-hmm. like it. Okay. I feel like there needs to be a reason because the style will guide the feel of it so you have that cover that cool of all the all the heroes going and punching kapow boom 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 boom, and you really feel like this is going to be a big fight Mm -hmm. there's not going to be a lot of cerebral thought process going on in this scene or this this comic if you were to then just er, stop style change it would make me think something's something's happened something's going to change dramatically Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't I don't know if I would like that. I don't know if uh, they would, there would have to be a reason that it would have to match with the story to make that big. So change. style, style is consistent with content and that's more comfortable. It's fair to say in general that for you, that's more comfortable that style reflects the content and a jarring change in style uh, would catch it, your it attention. Cue, Probably. It cues a, ch- a change. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I always go back to a Barb's Barb's comic. I, I've, I've loved because the art fits the comic. If yeah. her style changed to, uh, you know, stylized people, if, uh, if uh, divinity suddenly uh, was, I don't know, she, her, her features got weird or she was, now she's anime. Yeah. Yeah. If she yeah, got she went anime between right. one story, one issue and then the next, it would have to change. If, if, if her villains got, Suddenly, with superhero suits or super villain suits, and you know they were, they're, they're, it, it, it would it cues a, a change in the, um, the the really the overall theme I feel, or the overall feel rather of the of the story. Yeah, I agree. Um, what about you, Rory? What about you? How do you feel uh, yeah. about that? Uh, this guy had the nail on the head. There has to be a reason for the change, either like action or something severely emotional. Like one of the main characters had to have died, or a big love loss, or something, where all of a sudden now it's dark and rainy and scratchy art, or something. Well, mm-hmm. um, somebody I haven't watched the whole thing. Somebody spliced Adam West Batman into the new The Batman, and it's oh, <laughs> so you yes. got that goofy oh, Adam West yeah. gray and blue oh, oh. Wow. in the green. No, so like that. those two styles don't just like you can't yeah. just. It, it doesn't quite. Anyone else want to chime in on changing styles midstream? Is it a good, bad, indifferent? Barb? Uh, in the middle of the book? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I've seen that happen. Yeah, when, when they're behind schedule, they'll just throw any penciler at it. That, can you make <laughs> the, the deadline? In. Yeah. Can you make the deadline? Sure. Okay. Sure. It doesn't even look remotely like the artist who started on the book, but we're up against the wall. It's very yeah. jarring. Very jarring, yes. and it, it throws you out of the story immediately. Agreed. Agreed. I think it could be done gracefully over the whole book if if the art oh, sure. ever so subtly changed, and you weren't aware of it until later. Like, whoa, why is this different? I think that'd be a, a cool plot maneuver. I have yeah, been involved so in, in in many of those situations where where teams are brought in, different teams are brought in to, to catch up the deadline, and, and you're, oh, you've got the back half of that issue. It's like, what the, what's the front look like? I, I don't know, it's not done yet. <laughs> oh, that's just, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Desperation doesn't breed confidence. Well, people, that's, you know? where, that's where the inker's skill really comes in uh, handy. Well, yeah. not if you don't if know what the other really inker's skill. doing. No, that's true. Yeah. Right. No, no, I mean, it would be saying, nice if it was the same inker all the way through with a different that's penciler. That's what I'm but saying. It would yeah. no. be the yep. same inker. Yeah. No, Barb, Barb and I are on the same page where it's like you got four different pencilers, four different inkers throughout the book just to get the book no. done. And, you know, it's like, ah, oh, that's no. 
crap. You're, that doesn't are, work. You are correct, Rob, um, in, in that a good inker can smooth rough, the rough there. line, make it kind of yeah. consistent. Yeah, yeah, good, it's kind of like this. So kind of like with the, the Trumps, uh, our, our, our silver line Trumps one and two. You know, I, it was yes. two different Zimplers. I, I didn't try to not make them, you know, I, I let, let the Pistler come through, but I, you know, I kind of tried to make it the same all the way through. So I know some people didn't even realize it was two different Pistlers in it, but, uh, but yeah, it's weird sometimes. Or if you have a, a, a an art team, where they, they, they're trying to catch up, and it's not even a the end of a scene. You know, it's right in the middle. You know, the person's talking, and then all of a sudden, the next page, they're still talking, but it's a different person drawing the thing, and it's like, oh, God, yeah. that's terrible. It's, it's jarring. Uh, calculus says, I think it can be executed, but I prefer it not changing. And uh, Roland says, it's just terrible when that happens, and I, yeah. I agree with Roland. Uh, oh, yeah. Again, um, wow, here, here comes Roland. Speak of the devil. Well, well uh, what's, up? what's up, Roland? Good to see you, buddy. Oh, if, if Roland's here, I got to go. He, he, doesn't want me, he doesn't want me on the Wednesday show. He, said do, not, he said, do not go on the Wednesday show. Oh, yeah. We love you, Tommy. We don't care what Roland says. You're always welcome, buddy. I, 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 think, we welcome. Should, I think we should save the 90s and the, and the, and the aughts for another That's a good show. idea because we've got I think some stuff we're talking about, we, I think. Because you could sit and spin in the 90s for a long time. Oh, something really that's very important to talk <laughs> that's about. when it gets interesting. We have, we have something very important to talk about. We have a surprise, which is what the harbinger of Roland's appearance Ooh, brings harbinger. to us. Harbinger, wow. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him... Word. Uh, Dark. We're I'm going to let him uh, <laughs> sort of sort of take over for a minute here. And, and what's what seems to be going on, Roland? There's something special tonight. So we, dudes, 20. Does that number dudes. mean anything to y'all? Dudes? 20. 20 number dudes? There's 20, 20 of us? Another year, be another 20. year before I can drink? Let's see. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so that would have been idea. 17 Legal. for me. <laughs> mm. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Down in the dirty so south. Back in the day. <laughs> Down in the dirty. <laughs> 17 for me. <laughs> yep. All you had, you just had to be 18. Mm -hmm. 18. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you could get three 18 in life, Kansas, but that was the best yeah. one to do. Yeah. That was oh, a good yeah. one, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it, Tommy. Tommy. Yeah, I sure did. I didn't hear it. it was too, <laughs> I, it too, too many. I got eight, 18 in my life ears. to go, you know, listening to metal back in the oh. 80s, so, you know. So, You'd have thought yeah. Roland would have got that one, but he did. Yeah. He, I he wasn't listening. I was, I was listening to somebody else. <laughs> so, uh, too many. we're going to talk about the Kickstarter and uh, oh. Oh. Roland. You tell you tell yeah. us what this is about before we we roll on this one. Uh, set it up for us. Twenty guys, this is number twenty. Mm -hmm. Kickstarter mm -hmm. number twenty. Woo! That's awesome. So I got I got to say, you know, when when the, the, this last month when I've been doing some some shows with some different people on streams, and I mentioned that number, and, and you could just see the look on their face go twenty. Yeah. 20. Wow. Yeah, and, and of course, then I'm quick to add, and yes, we have fulfilled all of them on time as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I, I am uh, absolutely proud of the fact that we as a team have been able to do that. Uh, and I just tell people when, when they ask me, well, how you guys do that? I said, well, you know what? We just like making comic books. We're busy. Busy, <laughs> busy. <laughs> we, 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 we spend our time working. You we spend your sleep. time complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch and moan, bitch and moan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a, a little less of that and a little more of this will get it done, right? right? That's right. That's, That's exactly right. right. So, uh, so yeah, we're, we're, we're launching. I'm excited to say we are finishing up Twilight Grimm. Mr. Rob, take a bow. Right. That's right. Yes. Uh, all all four Rob's issues book. of this one. Um, mm -hmm. Ooh, look yeah, at that. Look That's, at that. That's actually one of the pages. That's awesome. going to be available Scatty. as, Scatty as a uh, an add-on. So, um, awesome. yeah, so yeah, Rob has been uh, very generous, and and uh, w there's some cool pages from Twilight Grim number four that you can get. But uh, this is the conclusion, you folks. Uh, been been oh, that's a nice page. That's Look cool. at that. Yeah, look at that. That's Calculus right. That's spooky. right. Yeah, spooky yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So so we've got Twilight Grim number four. 
We have got uh, Kalis. Achilles has landed number one. Woo-hoo. So if yeah. y'all remember, Kalis was the first miniseries that, that we were able to do through to conclusion. Twilight Grimm will be the second. But Kalis, Brent has got his team jamming, and they've already finished uh, number one of Achilles has landed. So, Can't uh, wait. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited to, to – it, dude, it looks good. It looks really good. And, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, so – and then we also have uh, Sirens number two, which has been, uh, yes, beautifully uh, digitally remastered and colored by the Empress of Inks there. Um, and for those of you keeping score, we uh, and, and there's another there's another uh, page of original Ooh. art that's going to be available as an add-on, uh, one that's of the covers awesome. to to Sirens. Hmm. That's, that's so for those of you keeping score, we only just um, we only just kickstarted Sirens one just a few kickstarters back. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, this is one of our remix books, and I think Barb, didn't you send me a message that like you're halfway through number three? Halfway, halfway through number three, wow, so cool. uh, so that we're, we're, so we're cool. yep, we are jamming on that, and halfway then halfway through we, Divinity three, and then we have one more remix books cool. that the uh, remix book that we uh, are adding into the mix, uh, and it is called the Scary Book. It is a it is a humor <laughs> scary book. Um, <laughs> I love really, that. Really, really sweet art by Steve Wilhite and Dan Schaefer, uh, and it has been. Uh, digitally remastered and colored by uh, Eric Rossman, who I'm hoping to get to join us. Uh, he might join the the, the Tuesday crew because he's out on the West Coast, but I've been been trying okay. to talk him into joining us some. But he's one of those that's like, stream, what do you mean? I got to talk to people? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Just talk to all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, Just uh, pretend we're has your friends. Roland, ru- rumor Just has it that uh, Steve Wilhite is going to be a guest on Wednesday Wham. In the, the, the future, I believe there's that a rumor. rumor is accurate. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when when uh, I, I don't have that in front of me, do you know the date? Is that next week? Uh, the date is I think actually that... the seventh of September, which will be next week. Yeah, next yeah. week. Oh, no. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I'm gonna uh, be, so, yep. so next week, if if, if, all, if all goes yes. well, if all goes well, I'll be. Already on the road. Um, we, we, we're running out of time. I'm pointing to my the clock on my computer uh, because yes, where will we be in a couple of weeks too? Right. Two weekends from now, we're right? going to be in Daytona Beach. A whole Beach bunch of us going to be in Daytona Comic Beach. Con. Right. Yes. It's very exciting. And, uh, I tried, but they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Florida, Florida won't let you in. Yes. Florida. No. No, we'll give you a special end. pass. Yeah. They said no. Pass. Yeah, Rob, yeah, we're gonna get Rob already we're, knows we're gonna he's he's going to be the number one ask next year. So <laughs> Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I, I, every... I did ask, and he'd already filled the table. And yeah. he says, I wouldn't, you know, we can't fit you in. And I'm going, that's okay. <laughs> you can that's come and walk of... around if you want. Yeah, <laughs> I could, yeah, people. but that's a long drive. There's a lot of silver liners there. There's a lot of silver liners there. It's going to be fantastic. So yeah, we also gonna, encourage yeah. everybody to go to the YouTube channel. Yes, subscribe. And, uh, subscribe. Go yes. to the YouTube channel yeah. and subscribe. Uh, now, I don't, there's a giveaway. I, I did put the, the Kickstarter video here, so th- this can be the the, the debut. We are it. now going to roll the Kickstarter video. Roll that so beautiful here, bean footage. Here we go, everybody. Hi, and welcome to the Kickstarter. I'm oh, Roland beautiful. Man, and I'm the chief cook and bottle washer at Silverline Comics, <laughs> a genre-spanning independent comic and graphic novel publisher. And I'm here to tell you about our Kickstarter number 20. 20. Can you believe we've done 20 Kickstarters? That's right, 20 Kickstarters. We have successfully funded and shipped 20 Kickstarters. That's 20. That means... We are making comic books, and I'm here to tell you about our next batch of Kickstarter comics that you know you want to support it if you can. So I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to let Brent Larson tell you about Kalis. Take it away, Brent. Okay, we'll finally get to see how the story ends. Wait a minute. That's it? A tree floating in space? That's so weird. Hi, I'm Brent Larson. You may remember me from such creator-owned comics as Kalis. Some of you at the end of the story thought, this is no way for a story to end, and 
I agree, which is why I'm excited to announce that in September we will be kickstarting Kalis Volume 2. It'll tell more of the story of where Scott Anders actually has been, why he wants to go back, what's the CIA doing in the meantime, and who is the mysterious group that's trying to keep him here on Earth. It's very exciting, the art is wonderful, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So thanks for your support, and we'll see you in the comments. Thank you, Brent. And now here's Rob Davis to tell us about Twilight Grimm. <laughs> 20 years ago, the city of Held Heights was nearly destroyed as the result of warfare between humans and vampires. In its aftermath, the two factions forged a most unusual peace plan. A high and heavily guarded wall now splits the two sides of the city. On one side of the wall reside the middle and upper classes of humans. It is clean, beautiful, and safe. On the other side of the wall, where a teenaged petty thief named Susie Q has just been exiled, lies the darkest and most horrible ghetto imaginable. Here, amongst squalor and vice, dwell the poor, the homeless, the forgotten, and the vampires. Led by the family of Gregor Radovic. As long as the vampires stay on their side of the wall, the humans on the other side are willing to pretend they don't exist and let them rule over this so-called blood zone as they see fit. This includes turning a blind eye as the vampires feast upon the zone's human inhabitants. Amidst rumors that the long-held truce may be unraveling, there's no human law in the blood zone, save for that dispensed by a mysterious and violent young man who has appointed himself its sole guardian from the depredations of the vampires. His name? is Twilight Grimm. Thank you, Rob. We've also got Sirens, number two, and Scary Book, number one, which is part of our remix line. You're gonna love those. Horror goes in with our Suvon Horror Extravaganza. So, back it if you can. If you can't back it, we get it. We're in a inflation economy. You can share it. Tell all the people you know who love comic books that we make comic books and we ship them out because obviously this is Kickstarter number 20. And until then, remember to make mine so line. Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding work, guys. That was that was great. Rob, Rob think, you, you, wow. you, you, your voice. I mean, you got yeah, this audio book. You, yeah, you got it. Show us later, man. <laughs> we, we found another talent, a hidden talent in Rob. Not only can he mimic any style, he can now do the audio voice and radio drama. Got it. Man, Ooh, yeah. Awesome. Your very own Prairie Home Companion. We have an Orson, Rob, Orson Rob. Wells, Garrison Keeler. Orson <laughs> Wells and Garrison Keeler. Why are we all going to Can you record my, my voice, Mel? Post record Mountain Biscuits. Do <laughs> <laughs> this evening's episode. <laughs> I love it. Oh, no, my it's gosh. It's good. It's great. Rob, Rob's email well, is going to be full of people asking oh, yeah. him to, hey, can you, can you narrate my book? <laughs> yeah. So have we flipped the switch yet? No, I, hit, I, you know, you guys hit the button rolling. It, you guys have got to be the ones. So you Smash always seven. count us down. So 10, right now, nine, nine, eight, eight, eight seven, 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 six, 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 six five, 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 four, four three, 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 so slow. Two, two, one, 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 make it happen. Zero. And it is button pushed. <laughs> I'm waiting live. for the confirmation. Is it? Refresh it. Refresh it. Is it's it, live. It's live. It's, live. Oh, <laughs> it's alive. It is a live. Nobody has it up. I thought one of you might have had it up. Folks, line up <laughs> no, and I support don't. our show. Uh, let's see if, yeah, let's see if awesome. that, that e email notification actually works. I'm going to check my email. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> what I'm checking is my email. See if it, I get a notification. That's awesome. Guys, once again, we thank you for joining us tonight. Roland, thank you for joining us. Thank you for allowing thank you for Tommy the Inker, who never sleeps, to join us. Even though he was lost in the Blair Witch Forest, <laughs> he's gone. Uh, he, <laughs> it was Love it you, was Tommy. fun. It was a blast, and uh, we always like to close every show with our phrase: "Make mine." Silverline. Silver Hi, my name is Sergio Cariello, and make mine Silverline.